Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our May 29th Mornings with Maya show. I'm going to give everyone a couple of minutes to join us and get settled. Um, grab your coffee because I know for some of us it's early. Some of us it's kind of late morning, but other <laughs> it's pretty early. And I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, I am here with Dave Taggy today. He's going to be helping me answer some questions. And then I also have my teammate, Ali. She's going to be on our um, Facebook comments, helping answer any questions, pointing you in the right direction, posting our links and all of that. Um, so if you see Mayesh, that's who it is. Hi, Ali. Good morning. Uh, also, I have some special guests helping me answer some of the other questions. So I have Jody Duncan and I also have Ryan O'Neill. Jody Duncan is from Social Jody. She's been a guest on our show before, so she may look familiar to you on top of that she was um, our second Mayish Design Star. So it'll be fun having her pop on for a few minutes. And then Ryan O'Neill is with Curie and he'll be helping me answer some accounting questions that one of you guys sent in. So super, super excited about that. After we are done um, talking about all of that lovely goodness, I will also have Greg Campbell and Eric New. Um, they're co-owners of Garden District and they have a new book. Let me show you. Ready? It's this beautiful uh, coffee table book called Floors to the Field. Um, and they're gonna be talking about how that came to be and a little bit about the book. So super excited about that. Hope you guys stay on. And let me see, what else do we need to talk about? I also wanted to let you guys know, um, if you don't uh, know already, that we have a really amazing international workshop experience happening next year, March 2009. 2019 you guys got to come it's almost already halfway sold out so if you're thinking about coming don't delay on getting your ticket um, I know it's a lot of details to figure out but it's gonna be amazing I have a great designer lineup I have Holly Chapel Sue McClary I also have Kaylee Young this year's design star along with Veronica Cicero who does our Spanish design videos so they're all amazing ladies, super talented. You're gonna learn a ton from them. Um, and it's happening in Quito, Ecuador at a beautiful hacienda. And then we're also gonna be doing farm tours and a couple other little day trips as well mixed in there. So going to be amazing. Check it out, go to mesh.com. Also post the link for you. Um, this year's workshop tour is well underway. We just finished up with Charleston and um, that was, it turned out beautiful. I don't know if you guys saw our Instagram stories and posts, um, but if you haven't, go check that out because it was, it just turned out just so, it was just dreamy. The lighting was amazing. Keely was great. The students obviously are like the best part, just talking to everyone. Um, it's just an amazing experience. So if you have time, um, definitely check out, we're going to be in Seattle, Santa Barbara, and Salt Lake City. Cool beans. Um, also wanted to make sure that you guys know to mark your calendars for June 12th, and because um, that will be our next show. Send in your questions. If we don't get your questions today, because I have a lot of people coming on, um, I'll add them to the next show, no problem. Also, if you've ever posted a question and I didn't get to it, or you don't remember seeing it, let me know, because... I definitely can miss things. There's a lot of comments on some of these videos um, and I try to get to them all, but sometimes I am not perfect. If you've noticed, I have my puppy in the background, but he's being quiet because I got him a special bark collar. So we'll see. He wants to be next to me, so he might see his little curly cute tail in the background. Um, good morning, Kelly from Rio Vista Floral in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, you're in my neck of the woods. You're probably like super close to me. Good morning, thanks for joining us. I know there's a puppy. I finally have him here. I'll show you his face maybe later. He's so cute and squishy. Um, we have Jenny from Laurenburg, North Carolina. Good morning. Uh, yeah, Charleston was so awesome, Jenny, right? Love it. Uh, Casey's here, good morning, Casey. Uh, Jamie from Portland, good morning. Hi guys, I love it. Say good morning, let me know where you're where you're from, where you're sitting around at. Um, yeah, I'm in sunny South Florida. It's not been so sunny lately. It's <laughs> been really rainy, but today actually, right this second looks nice, but it might be raining again. So we're a little bit of a swamp land right now, uh, but that's all good. Uh, what else do we need to talk about? I think that's, I think that's it. So I think I'm gonna bring on Dave. Carol, good morning. Uh, Stockton, California, love it. 
Um, TG from Pistol and Bloom in LA. Good morning. Love it, guys. Uh, it's going to be good. Good show. It's, um, oh, well, I know the last thing that I wanted to talk about real quick while I'm bringing on Dave. Um, if you miss this live show, totally cool. It's going to be replayed. You can watch the replay on Facebook right away. Um, otherwise, you'll find it on our mesh.com blog, and we'll be good. You, it, also, you'll have the podcast. I, I create a bod, podcast from this video. Um, if you haven't checked that out, I love it. Good morning, Dave. How you doing? Good morning, Yvonne. Doing good. Nice long weekend. I know. Twice right? work today. <laughs> exactly. I know. Well, it was a long weekend. My husband actually ended up working a little bit every day just because he it's it's you know for us floral people it's a little bit of a cluster <laughs> after a holiday <laughs> to say the least <laughs> right so but it's good we we do it because we love you guys um so before you get started dave um i just wanted to let you guys know that are watching that i do have a new flower 411 that'll be hopefully posted today um we just got the information from purchasing last week and then ali and i were traveling so we just haven't had time to get that up on the blog but we will get that to you asap so that way you know what's going on on top of listening to this so dave you want to take it away and talk about some great stuff yeah, before I start on some of the beautiful stuff that is available right now and coming into season, I wanted to address a problem that we're having with the eucalyptus and these bohemian weddings that are super popular. Um, we are now winding down in Arizona and our wedding season is kind of finished except for some people up in the mountains who are still going on. But um, eucalyptus has been a huge problem for the past couple of months. Everybody wants it and Mother Nature is not providing enough to handle the demand that we have on this product. So I'm begging, I'm asking. Um, I know other states are going into their wedding seasons now. Be flexible. It's still in a new growth state. So you may need to select other greens other than eucalyptus. I mean, there are a lot of other beautiful things available. So that being said, <laughs> let's That's get into some of the service announcement. Yes, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that being said, let's get into some of the beautiful stuff that's becoming available um, from the West Coast. Um, I'm going to start out with an oddity here. Um, everybody loves scabiosapods, but this week we have bipolar scabiosapods, um, flowers and seed heads, both available on the same plant. How cool, rare and unique is that? That is so cool. I've never seen that before ever. I love yes. it. So, um, had to show that. Budleia is just starting. This is also known as butterfly bush because it attracts butterflies to your yard. This comes in the purples and mauves and pinks and also white and yellow. Um, it does slightly resemble lilac. So um, you can kind of fudge lilac with this as a sub. Um, just a nice little linear flower you can pop into your arrangements. And that's coming into season now. We'll see it all the way through the fall. I used and, to grow that in Ohio in my garden. I loved it. And um, I should have started with this one because this is my absolute favorite flower in the whole world. If anyone asks me, um, just a little background on this. Um, the Iris in Greek mythology, Iris was the goddess of the rainbow. And I brought in a simple kind of ice blue colored one here, white to ice blue, but they come in so many different colors. They're very short season. Um, they're just an amazing flower. Um, love this flower. So I had to show you so guys. That. Okay. From our friends in Washington state, my hometown, <laughs> <laughs> From the other side of the mountains, on the uh, east end of the mountains in Spokane, we get um, these beautiful Aramuris, and they can be super duper tall, so they add a lot of drama to your arrangements. Um, they've got some movement on top. They actually bloom from the bottom up, so you can get some time out of these. You do need to do a little maintenance on them to kind of take your knife and shave off the blooms as they expire on the bottom. But um, 
they'll last a long time. They give you a lot of drama. They're great for big lobby pieces. And if you need a lot of height and drama in your arrangements. So another cool summer flower just starting now. They're only around for a little while. So enjoy them while they're here. So cute. I like your mirrors. All right. These are amazing. I'm not sure what state we got these from, but dahlias are just beginning their natural season. <laughs> Let me express wow. that. Um, yeah. We do get them greenhouse grown year round and they are in limited colors when they are in the off season and they're very small, but these are the big dinner plates and we're just starting to see these come in now. They're humongous. A um, little bit on the fragile side, but look at the statement that makes. I mean, these suckers are huge. They're almost as big as my face. Love, love, love the dahlias. I think everyone can agree. Um, unfortunately, they don't like the desert, so we kind of miss out on them here um, when they're in their glory. Uh, there's not a lot of events that we can use them for, but we still bring them in a little bit here and there just to keep our designers, you know, happy. Yeah. And all right, a couple more things. You all know that we are paired up with Adelman's in um, Oregon for peonies. So I'm just going to bring one. This is not necessarily my favorite, but it is one of my favorites. This is the Red Charm. Um, they're humongous. Um, they come in an array of colors. We actually have these on special until they're out of season. So yes. talk to your sales rep about these. These things are humongo. Um, they come in pale yellows, they come in peach, they come in coral, they come in whites and all the different shades of pinks, including this nice burgundy red. So talk to your sales rep. We have a special running until they have cut all of the peonies out of this field for us. Yeah. And do you guys see all the peonies in my background too? Those are all real. My, yeah, here's, it's not fully blown open like the vase that I have, but I love them. They're gorgeous. They smell so pretty, too. All right. Here's another locally grown. This is Foxglove. Again, it's going to be around for a short amount of time. Um, it's really cool. Let me pull off a bloom and see if I can get this to focus. It's got these kind of speckles in the center. I don't know if that's going to focus or not. Probably not. Uh, but yeah, anyway, it, it's just really cool looking, um, super speckly. It's a nice linear, it's a, it's a great higher end alternative to a Snapdragon in your arrangements. What other so, colors do, does that come in, Dave? They come in mauves and purples and whites. I've seen them in yellow, although those are kind of rare. This is, um, I believe, Illumination. It's kind of a hot pink and orange two-tone um, so they do come in a limited range of colors. They're all by colors. So um, really cool. Yeah, love it. I think okay. we had the white uh, at our workshop. It was beautiful. All right. One last domestic item here. This is Kiss Me Over the Garden Gate, also known as Polygonum. Um, just a nice pop of hot pink. It's got some drama to it and movement. So uh, pretty stuff coming in for the summer. Beautiful. Love it. Thanks for sharing, Dave. Yeah. Anything, anything else that you can think of about the world of flowers that might be interesting to know? Um, like I said, we go, we start our um, long, hot summer here this time of year. So our weddings start to fade out. And I know the rest of the country is kind of doing the opposite. They're gearing up yes. and, and getting into their season. So it really For depends sure. on where you are. Um, I don't really have any other no, it's good. highlights. I know the eucalyptus thing has, has been kind of an ongoing problem. That's why I wanted to bring that up. So. No, it's perfect. It's good. Um, thanks, Dave, for sharing all of that. I love the show and tell. I think that's so fun. Um, do you guys, if you have any flower questions, just let us know. Dave is awesome at answering them. And if we don't know it, we 
figure it out because, you know, sometimes it's hard to know every single thing about the thousands of products that we sell. Um, but it's just fun to show off everything. And, you know, Edelman's are, you know, we, I think pretty much all of our branches have specials with those peonies. Um, it's just a really great program. We have it going on until pretty much we run out. Um, but we are one of the exclusive providers of these peonies. And so we just, it's just exciting and, you know, to help us help support our, our U.S. farms. We, we love it. So we always love kind of showing them off and uh, just wanted to bring that up. So thanks, Dave. I'm going to move on on to the rest of the show. I'm going to bring on Ryan now. So I will see you in a couple weeks, Dave. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Yvonne. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye. All right. And this time I'm going to try really hard not to hang up on anyone. Ryan, are you ready for me? I'm getting ready. I think he's getting ready. All right. How you doing, Ryan? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I am doing good. I'm so excited about kind of having multiple people on my show. I, this is my first time. I'm going to try really hard not to hang up on anyone and end the broadcast abruptly. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but thank you. So I got yeah, this question from, um, from Tara and I just thought it was perfect for you. So she wanted to know what do successful shops do for accounting? Being an artist, primarily accounting is not my strong suit, and I'm sure that problem is common among shop owners, especially smaller shops where the owner may be designing, some or most of the time. So I thought, I saw that and I was like, let me just grab Ryan real quick and see what he has to say about that. Sure, sure, and I, I've learned from my many years of working with florists that one of the, their most favorite things to do is to spend time walking on the beach with an Excel sheet and accounting <laughs> software and just Don't a we romantic all? experience, right? It is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's actually one of the funny parts is with our with our software, uh, it started, um, and, and uh, if anyone doesn't know me, I'm, I'm the founder of Curate. Uh, we formerly STEM Counter. We just rebranded. Um, and my wife and I started the software because we had a flower shop. And for us, it was just a headache. I needed numbers. I needed specifics. And for her, she needed to actually live life without having to worry about fighting with Excel. And right. um, she, she loved it floral design, incredible floral designer, and she can do it. She just would rather spend her time on more, on better things <laughs> than, um, than the accounting and the Excel and stuff like that. So um, one of the reasons we built in the first place was this exact question. Hey, how do we get the numbers that we need uh, that even some accounting softwares don't provide? Um, but I am going to give you a quick trip because we do still use an accounting software. Even though we use Curate, it's, I, would, I would avoid saying that that is our accounting software. We use something else for that. Um, but there's a really cool trick that, that we started utilizing. Um, before I get to that thing, it just it made a huge difference in our company. Before I get to that, uh, the question you have to ask is what are you using those numbers for? And um, the I knew for us, even starting a company, we're like, oh, we need to get into the accounting stuff. And I knew that there's so much out there. Um, but I've had two, two different size businesses now, and I'm realizing that there's different uses for different numbers. Um, for, uh, when we, for our shop, we're a small shop. We, we have two full-time employees, several contractors that work with us. Our biggest thing is, especially at our sites, it's easy to look at our numbers and be able to project and be able to tell, hey, what's happening? We don't have, you know, we have 35, 40 events. So we have a pretty uh, pretty simple structure for us to very quickly look at and make calls off of. Our biggest thing was to be able to say, hey, at the end of the year, we've got to report this information. We've got to hand it in to the, to, uh, the government. Um, in, in the U.S., we utilize a Schedule C. Um, and so those are things that we saw, hey, we need to get this in. Whereas my company now, we have, um, you know, we started out in January 1st, we had three employees. Now we have nine full-time employees at, at our company. And so we're asking completely different questions than we were even, you know, even seven months ago. Our question is, okay, hey, how do we make sure that we're keeping our revenues consistent? How do we make sure that we're projecting right so that we have enough cash flows to pay for employees? What, what are we investing in the marketing? And so our questions are way more than, hey, we got to pay taxes at the end of the year. we got to give an accounting for it. It's like it's saying, hey, let's get deep into this. Now, it, it, would it be great for a small company to still be asking those questions? Yeah, 100%. It would be great for, for startups to be asking those questions. But you, especially if you're starting up a company or buying a company, there are so many additional things. And so that's the biggest thing that, I, that you need to, the decision anyone needs to come down to is 
what what is the main purpose that I'm having to use with these numbers anyways? Uh, I would recommend very much highly getting an accountant. That made a huge difference. And I was a good accountant, not like a fifty dollar uh, end of year tax accountant. Find somebody. We, we pay it, for our small shop. We pay about a thousand dollars a year for our accountant um, when we could get our taxes done for 150 bucks with somebody. But that means we got to sit down and work with our accountant um, and they've saved us probably 15 to 20,000 because of those $1,000 a year that we've paid on it. And so it's huge difference. But so here's my trick. Here's, here's the tip that I would recommend uh, that made a big difference for us. We took in the U S we have something called a schedule C. If you're just an LLC, if you're just a small business, for the most part, most of the listeners are probably filling out a Schedule C at the end of the year. If you're a partnership, it gets a little bit wonky, but for the most part, you're filling out a Schedule C. Um, on the Schedule C, there are a listing of different categories. Like I think C8 is like advertising expenses and C9 is something else. C22 is office supplies. Um, on, on that sheet, um, what we did in our accounting software, we literally created our, it's called your chart of accounts, fancy fun terminology, but we created our chart of accounts, looked exactly like that. So when we go in, we get our bank statements automatically import and we just directly say, hey, C8 advertising expense. So anytime that we see that we invested money with the bridal magazine or the knot or something like that, anytime that transaction hit our bank account, we just literally hit C8 advertising. And so it simplified it down tremendously for us to grow uh, our company. Now, I know that if there's any accounting uh, nerds out there, some of you may be like cringing in your seats, like, no, you've got to get better data than that. And and it's true. You can totally get better data than that. But it just comes down to where you're going with your company. Why do you need it in the first place? For our small business, we, we have, my wife's just an incredible florist, an incredible businesswoman that I look up to. And for her, she she needs it because she's running it. She loves the size that she's at. She's not looking at growing or being able to find out what her you know first quarter fiscal uh, profitability was. Um, and with Curate, she basically has uh, like things like event breakdowns and reports that get generated from that that give her at least quick enough information to jump in. So that's my biggest suggestion. If you're if you're even asking the question, where does accounting fall in my company? I would suggest starting out with that saying, hey, at the end of the year, I got to make a report. Let me just create my chart of accounts. And so whenever I have my transactions imported into my accounting software, and there are some florists who use QuickBooks, which we have an integration with with our software. Some people use uh, Wave. I know we use Wave. Um, Wave apps is a free application for accounting. Um, there's a lot of different tools out there, but that saved us such a headache. So I don't know if that answers the question or if that helps people just wanting to get in and start getting stuff together. Yeah, no, I think that's great. Great. And uh, a little bit of a feedback. Do you hear that, Ryan? I don't. Okay. Right. Um, so using obviously QuickBooks, things like that, I think that's great. Um, talking about what you did, what does Summer say? Whenever you say accounting software, does that software offer weekly, monthly reporting? If so, what metrics can you see? Um, gross map margin dollars, turn inventory unit dollars. Would this be software that you could utilize for hard goods and perishables? Can you, okay, let me show you that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> that was a lot. But while you're reading that, I just wanted to point out too, and my face is all covered up because that's a great question, Summer. Um, there's also um, services that you can actually, um, you know, just book someone to do just bookkeeping stuff for you. Um, I, right. I feel like I'm not saying it correctly, but um, no, if you, yeah, yeah, did, there's different um, companies that offer that. So if you can't afford a full-time employee or or something like that, you can definitely look into those services to help you out. Do you have anything to sure. say about for Summer's question, Brian? Yeah, Summer's question is great. And if, if you're asking the questions that Summer's asking, um, you're a little bit further along in your business, you're more established, you're the type of people that we like uh, to chat with in our software. Um, and when I say accounting software, traditionally I'm referring to uh, things like QuickBooks, things that um, uh, allow you to keep up with your numbers. There are some, some, there are some pieces in QuickBooks where people attempt to keep up with it. Obviously it doesn't 
it, it, it fails to work exactly like Flores work. Um, I have seen in each of those different metrics, I've seen different softwares that handle different pieces of it. And so like being able to see your gross margins, being able to see your turn, your inventory units, um, some of those are built in, but the issue with uh, QuickBooks when it comes to those pieces is um, it, it doesn't view them it's split up the way many times. It, it views them as, oh, whole bunch of flowers and you're selling the whole bunch of flowers and it's not correctly allocating it to events that you you may have or um, you know it's da daily work versus weekly work versus events um, and so that's that's the biggest issue that I've seen florists have with those um, we we have some tools in our software that again I, I avoid saying that we are an accounting software but at the same time there are some tools that just are built in that are you're able to get details from our software that uh, accounting softwares that weren't built for Flourish really ha haven't taken into account. Um, so right. things like your margins, things like your uh, being able to manage your your hard goods and your perishables, and making sure that you're you're projecting your profit um, accurately on those. But at the same time, there's just so many different accounting softwares, and, and and then those are all good questions to ask once you're at that point that you know you, you you've got an established business. Now the question is, hey, let's start making sure that we're we're get, keeping every dollar. I, I heard one said one guy says that if um, if you uh, don't tell your money where to go, you'll wonder where it went. Um, right. And so, <laughs> so, so true. That's I see Jody shaking her head. I, yep. I love seeing everyone in the in the green room waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And so uh, th those numbers, uh, I, I want to hesitate, take a step back and say, I don't want to say they, they, they um, don't matter, but at the same time, it just depends on what stage you are in your company that you have to ask, hey, this first step, what I want to do. And I think all of those are great questions um, that unfortunately I've yet to see an accounting software per se, QuickBooks style that solves all those answers, but we right. definitely are working toward getting some of those. Awesome. Do you want to remind everyone where they can find out more information about you yeah. and Curate? Yeah, most certainly. So you can go to curate.co. Um, and I'm also going to uh, post in the group a blog post uh, uh, that we put on sort of the ta new U.S. tax law. It's just more of uh, it's more of a reflection of our company um, and and some of the conversations we had with our accountant about how, you know, what 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 observations should we take? So that's a good place to go if, if you want to sort of look at the new tax laws and how that might affect you. Um, but at the same time, if you're interested in Curate, um, we'd love to have the conversation uh, and, and see whether or not we can be able to help get some of these numbers that just have been so elusive for a lot of accounting softwares. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ryan. Yeah, most certainly. All right, we'll see time. you soon. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. That was an awesome question. And I'm glad that I was able to bring Ryan on because I know a little bit about accounting. Um, that's not my strong suit anymore. So now I am going to bring on Jody Duncan from Social Jody. Give me one second, get her on here. Hey, Jody, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you, Yvonne? I am awesome. I'm just glad I'm not hanging up on anyone today. That makes me happy. Avoiding I, this big uh, red button at all costs. <laughs> So I wanted you to come on today. Um, if you guys don't know Jody, she's from Social Jody. Um, she has her own uh, design company as well. She works with Design Master. Um, she just came to our Charleston workshop. She's just a really great resource. And I'm glad that I can just knock on her door real quick and be like, hey, can you pop on? So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So originally, I was going to have you come on and talk about um, ads, but I wanted to start with another question because usually Shelly helps me out with some design questions and it's from Claire and it's um she said that she's new at floral arranging. She started a little bit more than two years ago, um, but the most difficult thing she is doing right now is making wrist corsages. She says it's agony. It, it looks so easy, but when she watches other people do it, but when she does it, it's hard. So she just wants to know, do we have any simple ways of making a wrist corsage? Um, something super fast and easy. Do you have any tips for Claire? I do, I do. Well, first of all, there's a couple ways to approach a wrist corsage. You can do the um, old school traditional wire and tape, which if you're new, what might be completely overwhelming. Um, but I would recommend for speed and for security and really good mechanics is using cold glue. Um, and then also, if you've been in design very long at all, 
you know what when it gets on your clothes. It absolutely ruins your clothes. It just sticks right to it if you get hot glue or from a glue pan or any kind right. of thing. So what I recommend is using a pipe cleaner or chenille stem and glue your flower to that Chanel stem because like I said, if you've ever gotten glue on your clothes, you know it is there to stay. So <laughs> it's true. I mean, how many things do we have ruined? I've got ruined, I've got half a wardrobe of clothes that are completely wrecked because I got glue on them. And All right. So, okay. <laughs> I didn't take me long to figure out, hey, this glue would be really awesome to use on wrist corsages. Mm -hmm. So you can use, um, uh, there's, I have like a really short uh, YouTube video that's kind of janky, but it just shows how to do it and to glue onto little pieces of chenille. So you can take the little pieces um, and cut them up and wire them on. If it's a pre-made wrist corsage, you can put those on there and wrap it on really, really securely and then use plenty of cold glue to glue on your small flowers, whether it's spray roses or whatever kind of filler or whatever kind of foliage you're using. And it stays fantastic. It's really a secure way and it's a fast way. To glue. Awesome. And, and you can use ribbon too. Ribbon, of course, is a fabric. So make your bow or make your little ribbon tails and glue into that really tightly. So yeah. that's my recommendation. That's great. And then, can you hear me okay? Because I had to turn down my game. Can you? Is that yeah. all right? Okay, great. Um, Christy did uh, a video last year for wearable flowers, and she glued it onto ribbon. So we're going to um, show that. We'll hide our names. And uh, so check that out. We'll post that in the comments, too. Um, but it's a good, a good little tutorial for you guys to get started with uh, corsages. Awesome. Thanks, Jody. Welcome. The next question I have is from Jen, and this is why I wanted you to come on and visit with me. She said, I would love to hear what social media platforms florists are paying to be on, Facebook boosting, ads, et cetera, Instagram and Google, what kind of monthly budget makes sense, what's recommended, do florists do their own social media or use a company? Perfect question for Social Jody, by the way. That's, so. that's <laughs> a lot in that question, and I'll try to cover it all. But if I miss if I miss it, uh, send me a private message or get in touch with Yvonne if there's something I, I gloss over. First of all, I'm going to say it's going to depend on what you're selling. If you're a traditional uh, brick and mortar store selling traditional bouquets, or are you selling weddings and events? What you need to do in advertising, whether it's social media marketing or your print advertising, is you have to get crystal clear and have a really clear picture of what it is you're selling. Um, and the more you can distill that down and target it, the better success that you'll have. But if you're trying to sell everything to all kinds of people, you're going to really have limited success. So I would approach it with a really a lot of clarity and, and really distill it down to, I want to sell, you know, a $3,000 wedding package, or I want to sell um, a, a dozen roses on Fridays or whatever, whatever the case may be. So once you have that clear picture of what you're selling, then you can figure out where you want to do that at. But the other thing I'm going to say is social media is social. Everybody hates ads. Even Mark Zuckerberg himself knows that. <laughs> yeah. And so he, he, in February, they changed, um, they changed how, what you're going to see. And what you're going to see is a lot less Facebook ads because people go to Facebook, for example. And, of course, there's a lot of other platforms. I'm just using Facebook for an example. But, right. I mean, Facebook got a big slap in, um, in February with their advertising. And so the ad costs on Facebook are going to probably double before the end of the year. I'm not kidding. It's going to get super, super expensive. Um, and people that think a hundred dollars is a lot to spend on Facebook, it's, that's not even a drop in the bucket. I mean, it's kind of like you need to go big or go home on Facebook because spending 25, 50, 75 dollars, you might as well just throw it out in the street or give it to somebody. Um, right. especially if you're not, you're not going targeted, you have to be super, super targeted, but because it's social, what you have to realize with social media is everybody hates being sold to. But if you're telling a story or adding value to your customers lives, then they'll let you sell to them a little bit. So you have to be clever in how you do that. 
Um, and, and then you have to split test because once you're putting content out there and giving, it's like you give them the, the champagne and then you sell them the steak, give them something for free or give them, a, hey, you get a free rose. Leave us a review on, um, on our Google or on our Facebook and we'll give you a free rose. So do some things like that. And then once you have that interaction, you can target and really focus on who your ideal customer is because you need to know your cost per client um, and your cost per click and um, and just build brand equity so that they know, like, and trust you. Um, but if you just come in and you go sell, 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 I want to sell you this, I want to sell you that, people just go scroll right past. They scroll right past you. I, think of it like this. It's like going into a party. If you're a single guy and you got invited to this really hot party and there's all these beautiful women in there, you walk in and you go, oh, I want to marry you because they're all beautiful and fabulous. And you shout that into this room of beautiful, fabulous women and say, I want to marry you. They're all going to be like, well, that's really flattering, but it's kind of weird. Right. So you want to be a little more targeted than that. Otherwise, you know, people think, oh, that was kind of cute. Ha ha ha. Weird, strange. Okay. Bye. Um, so you've just got to build your brand equity. You've got to build relationship. You've got to add some value and then niche down to who your client is. And if I'm saying stuff that doesn't make any sense to you and you're like, what are you talking about? Then let's hop on a call and I can clear it up. But it's just the more targeted you can be is what I'm going to say, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, whether whatever it is, whether it's YouTube, be super targeted. I know it's counterintuitive. You want to sell everything to everybody, but that's the wrong approach to take. Yeah. And do you do you know like you, everyone that's watching too? If you have anything, do you have a monthly budget for Facebook ads and things like that? I'm very um, I'm a big believer in organic. I'm not saying ads is wrong, but I like I said, um, we're a fairly large wholesaler, and I spend maybe a couple hundred dollars per half year, <laughs> if that, on ads. So very, very minimal. And it's usually me just playing and like knowing how things work because, you know, I like to do Instagram ads, you know, that's connected to Facebook. And yes, you need a Facebook business account. Um, TJ, I think talked about that. TG um, brought that up in the comments. And so, yeah, you need to have um, a business account to do that, first of all. But I'm curious to see like, what what, what are you guys spending on this? I'm, I would love to know. Um, but what Jody said is like, it needs to be um, good content, not just like, hey, buy from me, because that's not going to work. It's not going to do anything for you. It needs to be, and, and if you're talking about Facebook specifically, it needs to be engaging. Um, all of their content needs to be gang engaging. Otherwise, you're just going to get dinged and they're not going to show anything for you. Um, and video is really huge. If you can do little videos, and even if you yeah. think, oh, I could never do a video, you know, you, it doesn't have to be you talking. It can be pictures with a voiceover, or it can be pictures with nice music and text. Video doesn't have to be like what me and Yvonne are doing right now, but Facebook loves video. Yeah. And if you want an easy way to do video, we use um, an app called Animoto. There's a whole bunch out there, but we like Animoto right now. They have different presets for you. So that way it's like already themed out and has the fonts and you can change the colors and then you pick the music. They suggest good music for you. So that way it's a little bit more in, um, engaging. And I use those, for example, for our Manish Market things. You know, obviously I don't want to be like, buy for Manish Market, but here, let me show you what's in there and, you know, what's a good value for you. And then, you know, here's a link and, and, and then it shows you the picture. So it's more engaging than saying, go to Manish Market and buy your flowers from there, you know. <laughs> and, and you guys add so much value. What you do is is speaks to your success because you are giving away such good content. Yes. That, okay, then, you know, what you're actually selling is the flowers, but you're not talking about selling the flowers. You're, you're yeah. having fun. You're adding... Yeah adding value to people's lives. So then they're like, Oh, I do want to buy from you. So this is a business model that anybody can adopt. Exactly. Um, if for like wedding floors, for example, if that's like a market that you really want to focus on, then you know, what, what are couples looking for that you could help with? Is it like a checklist? Is it um, some kind of piece of content that educates them on wedding flowers because this is their first big, huge purchase and working with flowers. Um, think about things like that, that really can add value. I think that'll help. Well, and you could make a PDF branded, especially, oh, congratulations, you're getting married. Send this exactly. to a, party, a wedding and put your name and your logo. And then this is your checklist. Yes. And, and give that to them for free. Brides mm -hmm. love 
lists and put it out on all your social media and send it, do email blasts with it. And then when you are selling something, you're at the top of their mind to come and do that. Exactly. And then to do that, I want to be very specific for you guys since we're here is you create that PDF or whatever piece of content you house it on your website. You don't post it directly on Facebook. You link over to it. But for them to get it, you, they need to fill out a form. So that way you're capturing their name and email address, a few pieces of inf information for them. Um, and that way you're getting some information about them. You can even maybe track them depending on how fancy your website is and how often they're coming back. Um, and then you email that out. So there's different ways of doing that. Um, we use HubSpot, um, but there's there's other different kind of landing pages. I know MailChimp now offers landing pages through um, their email service, so you can do it that way. Um, but yeah, I think that it's important to kind of have that funnel and feeding people. So even if you're doing ads, make sure you're having them land on a good page so that way you can collect information and make it worth it and you can really track like what's working, what's not. Absolutely. The opt-in page is super, super important. And whenever they engage with you on Facebook, if you put a video out there on your Facebook business page, you can go back and see how long people watched that video, right. how how much of it they watched. Did they watch with the sound on? Did they watch with it off? What country were they in? When you have that business page, you can go on the back side and look and see who these people are. And then you can run an ad campaign specifically targeted to them. So you're not like that guy walking in the room going, I want to marry you. You've already, right. you've already got your ideal client, people who are already aware of you. And it's a little easier for that sale to, uh, to translate then. Yeah, that's great. Um, Casey is on here and he's saying they spend about $500 per dinner on promoting field the base dinner tour to targeted audience and targeted again is just what Jody said, probably the most important thing that you can do with an ad on top of having an engaging piece of content. So um, that's great. Thanks, Casey. Yeah, that's great, Casey. Yeah. Uh, what else? I think that's it. Um, can you tell everyone where to find out more information about you and social Jody? Sure. Um, you can always shoot me an email and it's just Jody at JodyDuncan.com. We have our website, socialjody.com. Um, we're kind of multifaceted, multi-branded. If you just go type in Jody Duncan on the Google or look for me on social media, I'm not hard to find. You can't miss this hair. Um, <laughs> you can I love that hair. Message, uh, and, and there's a whole bunch of old design star videos that may have because I'm the second design star. So there's a whole year of yep. old star videos that you can go check out too so uh but i'm awesome. fine and i'm glad to jump on a call and answer any questions awesome thanks jody thanks javon all right i'll see you soon all right thanks for helping me out bye bye how fun is that all right guys thank you jody thank you ryan for joining me um, I have one other question from Jacqueline that I can answer on my own. Um, she wants to know what is the best practice for reposting someone else's images for Instagram? I noticed you all do it on the company Instagram. Do we have, um, do we comment and ask for permission, et cetera? So I have kind of two ways of thinking about this. So I have a way of thinking about it if you're a non-competitor and a way of thinking about it if you are competing in the same industry. So when we're reposting our customers work, it's usually because um, we are tagged in it. Um, so in those instances, I don't ask for permission, but I always make sure that they're tagged in our post and that we repost their original copy with our post. So there's a couple different ways of doing that. Um, I use Hootsuite and uh, an app called Repost. <laughs> I think that's a pretty common one. Um, and there's ways where you can actually tag the picture, but I, I don't like, I think it messes up the aesthetic of the picture. So I try not to do that um, unless it's more of like a competing type of thing. Um, also, if it's, if we aren't tagged in it, and again, it isn't in a competing business, I still, you know, I think it's okay to kind of repost um, and use that again as long as they are posting it's very clear that it's not our picture it's someone else's and i think we do a good job doing that so now if there is um a competing type of business i think if you're reposting someone else's work and um for your business i think it's imperative to ask for permission um, i i really highly recommend doing that and making sure that again that it's crystal clear that that isn't your picture. Um, 
in the comment and maybe on the picture as well, um, especially if you're not asking for permission. So you just want to, it's a small world. You, we bump into people everywhere, and I think it's just um, good business practice to do that. So do you guys, what do you guys do, everyone that's watching? Do you ask for permission? Do you share other pictures, other people's pictures? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Um, but that's how I do it, and that's that's my philosophy behind it. And I've never really had anyone complain. The only time is a couple years ago something happened with my description and we reshared a picture um i think promoting something and i forgot or i didn't find it it was something weird i maybe found it somewhere else and i thought i you know correctly credited it and i didn't and so someone just messaged me who actually it was their picture and so i i just adjusted the description apologized adjusted the description we all make mistakes we're all human so um and just fix your mistake when you when if you have one and that's pretty easy so i hope that answers your question jacqueline um if not just send me an email and i will walk you through more cool all right so i don't have any time for more questions because it's time for me to bring on our special guests i wanted again thank dave ryan and jody for helping me out today and we will all see you guys next month um, well, Dave and Shelly and I, hopefully. And so now our special guests are Greg Campbell and Eric New. They're co-owners of Garden District. Um, let me bring them on and I will introduce them more. All right, guys. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? I am good. Okay, so Garden District co-owners, Greg Campbell and Eric New. Which one is which? Remind me again. All right. <laughs> All right. Good. Uh, they are co-owners of Garden District. They have um, a partnership with Boundless of Creativity with an anything can be done attitude. They have navigated uh, a vibrant labyrinth of floriculture over, together over 25 years. That's amazing, guys. Uh, they operate in tandem as an architect and engineer. They exchange roles as needed. Greg is uh, the architect, a persistent alert perfectionist my kind of guy. Uh, Eric is the engineer. He's methodical strategist, always prepping for the next step. Um, so be it a skyscraping installation or a centerpiece, they weave flowers and greenery into textural structures that bring people together for every imaginable occasion. Their most re recent project was publishing their new book, Florist to the Field, and I'm very excited to have them on to chat about it. Welcome, Eric and Greg. Woo! Can Thank you. See you. That? There we go. <laughs> um, so before we dive into the excitement of the book, can you tell us a little bit about yourselves and how you both ended up in the floor industry? You first. Well, I uh, we both worked for a gentleman named Don Hoover, who was a, a trailblazer in the floral industry in our market. And there's 10 years between us. I'm 10 years older than Eric and I'd worked for John Hoover and Eric was 18, came to work for John Hoover and John, uh, unfortunately, Mr. Hoover passed away and I, along with a few co-workers were able to convince a bank to loan us money to purchase the business, to change the name to Garden District and um, flash forward a few years later, Eric becomes my business partner and uh, we both of us literally just fell into the business. We have no formal training. Um, I worked in wholesale for about a year in floral wholesale, and I was happy. That was a good experience for me. But it's been a, a lot of school of hard knocks for both of us. Right, right. Learn, learning as we go, and, and that's it. Yeah, it's, it, it wasn't our original plan to do this. We just fell into it, and it worked out. <laughs> 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 yeah, we believe it works out. <laughs> I feel like that's a really common story among people in the industry. You just kind of, you know, even with myself, for example, I was I worked at Progressive as an analyst and also like a business techie person. So, um, but I ended up getting kind of sucked into here. I would have never imagined working in a wholesale florist, but here I am, and I love it. So I don't have any plans on going anywhere. I love that. I love that those kind of stories. So how did you guys come up with the name Garden District? We we love that name, by the way. It's, it's awesome. We, the, the, we, the original shop was located 
in an area of town called Central Gardens. And we also had a lot of customers in an, an area of town called Chickasaw Gardens. And we have a uh, great, uh, we have a great fondness, effect, yeah. fondness yeah. For, for New Orleans and the Garden <laughs> of New Orleans. So it just, it was a, uh, a logical name based on a lot of uh, factors. Very cool. Very cool. And then the last question before we get to the book, because um, we can't interview a florist without asking, what are your guys' favorite flowers? Um, mine is uh, Lily of the Valley. Lily and, of the Valley. Uh, Muscari for me. Muscari. Oh, so you guys love the dainty flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we do. I never really thought about that, but uh, I go, uh, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. Um, Okay, so now, why now? What inspired you to uh, to take on creating and publishing Floors to the Field? Um, I, well, we had been talking about doing a book for a while, um, but we just couldn't come up with the concept that we wanted to do. And um, the first chapter in the book, which is um, a, a dinner at Woodson Ridge Farms, or the farmstead on Woodson Ridge now, in Oxford, Mississippi, we... Uh, we're contacted by a friend of ours, Elizabeth High School, who's a chef and a contributor on the Today Show a lot now, um, to come down and, and uh, just kind of create arrangements with the girl who was starting uh, a flower business there and a flower farm. And it evolved into a dinner, and Elizabeth sent out a great invitation that said florist to the farm. And we knew that we were going to have a photographer there, and so we had this dinner. And we saw the pictures and then we said, OK, how can we do this again at other farms that we that supply us? And then it just kind of evolved from there. I love it. And I actually I flipped through the book yesterday and uh, it's just it's beautiful. And it, and I, I think uh, I love having you guys on today's show because I think it works well with my last guest that I had on De Deborah Prinzing with Slow Flowers um, and just talking about the importance of, you know, supporting our, our American growers. And so I think this is a beautiful tribute to them and I love it. Thank you. The, the great thing about the book is there are they are our sources that we, we purchase their, their product and sell it from our shop here in Memphis. And, you know, over 20, 25 years, we developed relationships with these people. And so it was a way we're very proud that each chapter features the farm. Most of them are family owned, family run, uh, the history of the farm, their relation to the community. And um, it was very rewarding to, yeah. to be, be on the farms and to be, give back, if you will. Right, right. And I want to mention, too, not all of them were in the U.S., but I feel like no. oh, most of them were. Three, three in the Netherlands and yeah. uh, all the others are, are in the U.S. So, yeah. Awesome. That's yeah, that's great. Who is your intended uh, audience and how, what do you hope that they gain from reading your book? It, I think there's a, a wide audience. That, that's the great thing about the book also. Is, um, someone could pick up the book who wants to start a florist and pretty much get 12 sources for flowers right there. Right. Um, and, and how we've, and how we've gone about business. Um, but also uh, just our customers love it. They love seeing what we've done. And then there's been a lot of buzz around. We have a uh, book tours uh, starting later on this month um, where we're going to Louisiana and Florida, North Carolina, Virginia, St. Louis, all these different locations where uh, people who don't even know us when they see the book, they're excited about it. Uh, so it reaches a broad spectrum of people. Right, the, right. The uh, the great thing about the book is, it, yes, it's a pretty book, a beautiful photograph by uh, mm -hmm. photographer Sarah Rossi. But there's also a story uh, to each chapter. And um, so it, it appealed to someone who likes a pretty book. It would appeal to someone who like is interested in gardening. Obviously, people interested in the floral industry. Um, so, like Eric said, it's a pretty broad range. We feel of uh, people that would that appeal to. Yeah. Um, I, when I was flipping through it, I loved and I, I read some of the stories, which was great. But I think what I love most is I you know we feel like a lot of people. I mean, even designers don't really understand all of the work that goes behind growing the flowers um, and why they cost what they do and even the logistics of it. 
Um, and so you really get to see that and get a really great feel for what it takes to be a, a flower farmer. So I, I think that was that part was amazing. I loved it. Do you guys have a favorite part of the book or um, a favorite chapter, a favorite story that you that's in here? Oh, you know, we were so personally connected to so many of the dinners, events that happened. And just to, the, the, the concept of each dinner is we would show up literally with our SNPs and we produced an event using the product that they raise on the farm. And it was up to them to decide how they wanted to use it. And one of them was uh, at Cam Floor. It was a thank you. Uh, it was a forum tour and a thank you for clients at Cam Floor. And then another one in the Netherlands was a surprise birthday party for the matriarch of the family. And so it's it would be very hard to find a favorite because each one was special, literally in its own way. Yeah. Right. It's like picking a favorite child. I, I get it. <laughs> Your favorite puppy or what? Right. You just yeah, say? favorite puppy. I got, I've got a couple of those too sitting around. Uh, that's awesome. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the different people you collaborated with to write this book and your experience with them? Well, uh, Christian Owen was our publisher and the, the writer on the book, and she traveled with us uh, everywhere that we went. And our main photographer uh, for the book was Sarah Bell, uh, who shot uh, more than three quarters of the, the parties, and she traveled with us to Oregon, California, Wisconsin, and to the Netherlands. And uh, she was fantastic. I think she shot 35,000 pictures. For wow. The that we called through and went through. And um, and, and uh, back to Christian, her writing, and, and what we're so proud of with the book, as Greg was saying, is the, the, the story itself. It's we're just proud that the book is not just about us. There, there's a chapter about us, but each chapter is about the farm. And Christian did an amazing job of uh, high, of showcasing those farms and the families and what they do. And um, again, that's what we're most proud of with the book. Right, right. So how long did it take from start to finish? About 18 months. 18 um, months from start to finish on uh, the travel and all that. And then it had to go into production for about another six months. So I guess in total about two years. Wow. And, 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 and part of that is because after the first dinner party that we did, we had, um, th there was a little lull there. And plus th there was a winter lull also where there's not a lot of things growing at the farms. And so, and, and Christmas going on and we were really busy at the shop. So, that, you know, there was a big lull there, but in all, it, about um, 18 months of production. Okay. And it, cool. was, it was a busy year. And, and, you know, keep in mind, we were also keeping the shop happy. We right. Shop running. So it was a, a very busy uh, 18 months. Uh, but somehow we, we did it. We, we made yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. The business doesn't stop, right? It's just right. on top of your normal everyday life. <laughs> Yeah. And so eight, out of the 18 months to two years, what was your favorite part of the whole process of creating this book? Well, obviously the traveling to every farm and, and, and meeting everybody. That was the, that, that's just the best being able to be there hands on uh, seeing what they do. Uh, you know, we've, some of these farms we had visited before, um, Cam floor we had been to, Kenyan growers we had been to, um, but uh, Star Valley we had never been to in Wisconsin, and um, we had met Phil there before, but we had never, or, or he he had been to our shop, but we had never seen their operation, and it was really great to be there. Which I know Casey um, is on the chat now, and we're going to be back at Star Valley on September eighth to do the field of vase dinner for uh, the American Grown Flowers. Um, so a little, um, yeah. in little there. Plug. a little plug. <laughs> yep. 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 I was, I was going to bring that up. So that's happening in September. Uh, we'll post the link for that as well. Um, I'll put it on the screen, but it's a long, a long link. <laughs> there we go. It's a big one, but we'll put it in the comments too, so that we guys can check it out and get more information about the event. But do you want to talk a little bit about that too? Yeah, it's, we're very proud to be a part of it. Uh, it's, uh, a series of dinners um, that are held across at different growers across the nation. And 
this one is at our good friends at Star Valley, which if you have a chance to attend this one, is the, one of the most beautiful flower farms you can imagine. Uh, September 8th, uh, the weather should be ideal. Um, it's, I've, it's, an out, it's, an out, it's an outdoor event. It's a dinner and it benefits uh, American grown flowers. And um, we show up just like we did for the event we did at Star Valley. Um, and we use the product that they grow there on the farm and it features the farm. So we're very proud to be a part of it. I love it. I love it. Um, I personally have not been to a field to base dinner yet. One day I'm sure I will. Um, but I know we've, uh, our, our people have gone to quite a few and they're always beautiful and everyone just loves it. It's a really amazing experience. So if you guys have a chance to check one out, whether it's the one um, at Star Valley Flowers and there, or there's a couple others, I put a link here too, we'll post that, um, but you guys can check it out. Uh, that's great. Roxanne says, where is the location in Wisconsin? It's a uh, Soldier's Grove, right? It, I don't know where that is though. Do you, do you guys know where that is? I don't know anything. We're, we, we're, in, we're in Memphis, Tennessee now. That's where our shop is. And we're on the Mississippi River. Soldier's Grove is very near. It's near the Mississippi River in Wisconsin. And if you go across the river, you're in Iowa. So that's the relation there. We, okay. We flew into Chicago and drove for yeah. two, or two and a half, three yeah, hours. Yeah, three hours. It's, okay. uh, Casey will say th this is the most rural field of ace dinner they've ever done. Um, the, the, there's actually one in nashville which would have been a lot closer for us to do uh but we have an event that weekend and couldn't do that and plus the guys at star valley wanted us there because of the book and because they're in the book and um we couldn't turn that down uh, but it's it's pretty much in the middle of nowhere <laughs> but, <laughs> i mean it's it's one of the most beautiful places um i've been to and just really 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 nice so that's awesome uh do you guys want to tell everyone where they can get more information about your book sure you can uh they can the book can be ordered through southerly media it's uh www.southerlymedia.com yep. there it is or, or you can go to our website Correct. um you go go to gardenersmemphis.com and there's a picture of the book on the um on the landing page there and if you uh Click on that; it'll take you to the uh, website where you want to, where you can order it, and um, we'll also post a link in the chat here in a second uh, so that people can get that. Yeah. It's, it's also we are uh, we are being uh, a book distributor has picked it up, and so it's available through Common Ground for uh, people on a retail level, a wholesale level. That is, we're excited about that because uh, it'll get a lot of exposure starting this July at the, the big markets. Awesome. Good. Great. Um, the There's a, a special link that you guys sent us, and that's on all of our posts, guys. If you check that out, you'll be able to click that link and find the book as well. Um, do you guys have any other thoughts that you want to share before we close out today's show? Well, we I will say this. We appreciate you, Mayesh, yes. because you're very much part of our uh, business here. We receive weekly shipments every week. From Maria. From Maria. We have oh, to mention Maria. Shout out yeah. to Maria. <laughs> shout out to Maria. Woo -woo. Good care of us. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we, we really appreciate you having us on um, and uh, featuring uh, the book, obviously, and uh, the dinner that's happening in September. Yeah, I love it. I love when I see people, you know, either doing publishing or product development. I just think it's really exciting. It's, you know, another kind of avenue for people to explore. And so I, I think this is great. And the book is beautiful. It's so well written. The stories are amazing. And like I said, it's just fun to get a peek behind the scenes of what is really going on with the flowers that you guys use and all of your all of your work, whether it's events or weddings or everyday design. So um, thank you guys. Thank you, Greg and Eric. It was amazing having you guys on. And uh, hopefully we maybe can have you back on a little bit later and you, a few months after you guys launch and let us know how it's all going. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, guys. What a fun show, right? I had a whole lot of fun. I hope you guys did too. Uh, Maria's on here saying, I love you guys to Eric and Greg. Sorry, I just saw that before I let them go. 
Um, thanks for watching, Maria, and everyone else. Um, I love having you guys on the show. It's so fun when I go to different events and workshops and I get to actually meet you guys in real life. Um, that it really makes my day. So mark your calendars for two weeks. Um, June 12th, we'll have our next show. And um, it's just time to wrap up and closing comments. So if you're new to the show, uh, I hope that you like us and follow us, whether um, it's on Facebook or YouTube, uh, wherever we post our videos. Uh, if you found value in our show, I hope that you share it. If you can share it with your um, flower friend groups, I know we're all in those groups. If you can share it, that would be great. I would love that as well. And again, I just wanted to thank you for coming on the show today. Without you guys, we wouldn't have a show. Um, and I really love doing this. So I think it's so much fun. And with that, I just wanted to say Dave, Shelly, and I will be back with you guys next month and send in your questions, ask us anything, and I hope you have a rocking day. Take care. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.